In this video, we're going to focus on some physics problems that will help us to calculate the net force in the x direction or in the horizontal direction. So let's start with this problem. A 5 kilogram box is pulled to the right by a horizontal force of 200 newtons. A constant frictional force of 60 newtons opposes it. Part A. Calculate the net horizontal force acting on the box. So let's draw a picture. So let's say this is the 5 kilogram box. And it's being pulled to the right by a 200 newton force. Now there is a constant frictional force that opposes it. Friction always opposes motion. So if the box is moving to the right, friction is going to be directed towards the left. And the frictional force is 60 newtons. So let's write an expression for the net force. So the net force in the x direction is going to be equal to F. Because this is directed in the positive x direction, this F is positive. Now this one is directed in the negative x direction, so it's going to be negative F. So the net horizontal force in the x direction is the difference between these two forces. And so that's going to be 200 minus 60. So the net horizontal force is simply 140 newtons. So this is the answer to part A. Now what about part B? How can we now calculate the acceleration acted on this box? Now Newton's second law states that the net force be it in the x direction or in the y direction, is equal to ma, mass times acceleration. And it also states that if the net force is in the x direction, the acceleration has to be in the x direction. If the net force is in the y direction, the acceleration has to be in the y direction. The acceleration and force vectors will always be in the same direction. Now the net force we know is 140. The mass of the block is 5 kilograms. So to find the acceleration in a horizontal direction, it's going to be 140 divided by 5. And so and that comes out to be 28 meters per second squared. So that's the answer for part B. So part C, how far will the box travel after 15 seconds? So that's simply a ketomatic problem. So let me just get rid of this stuff. Now let's write down the important information that we have. So we have the acceleration. It's 28 meters per second squared. And we know the time. The time is 15 seconds. Now we don't have an initial speed, so we're going to assume that the box accelerated from rest. So the initial speed, we're going to assign a value of 0 to it. Our goal is to find the distance traveled by the box. What kinematic formula do you know has these four variables? Here's the equation that you need. The displacement, which is going to be the same as distance in this problem because it's moving in one direction, it's not changing direction. The displacement is going to be v initial t plus 1 half at squared. The initial speed is 0, so it's going to be 1 half times 28 times 15 squared. Half of 28 is 14. 15 squared is 225. So let's multiply 14 by 225. And so the displacement is 3,150 meters, which is 3.15 kilometers. So that's how far the box is going to travel if these two forces are applied to it. Now let's work on another problem. A 12 kilogram box is pulled to the right by a 350 newton force that is 30 degrees above the horizontal and a constant frictional force of 120 newtons opposes it. So let's draw a picture. It's going to be similar to the last picture but slightly different as well. So it's not exactly the same. So here's the frictional force that opposes it and it's 120 newtons. Now we got another force that is 30 degrees above the horizontal. 
and that force is 350 newtons. So with this picture, what is the net horizontal force acting on the box? Feel free to pause the video to work on this example. Now because the applied force is at an angle, it's going to have an x component and a y component. Our goal is to find the net horizontal force. So we need only concern ourselves with the x component of this force. So the net force in the x direction is going to be f of x, which is in the positive x direction. And this one is in a negative x direction, so it's going to be minus lowercase f. Now what is fx? Fy is f sine theta. And fx is f cosine theta. So this is what we need in this example. So this is going to be f times cosine theta minus f. So that's going to be 350 times the cosine of 30 degrees minus 120. Now make sure your calculator is in degree mode so you can get the right answer. 350 times cosine 30, that's about 303.1. And if we subtract that by 120, that will give us a net force in the x direction of 183.1 newtons. So that's the answer to part A. Now let's move on to part B. So let's get rid of most of the stuff that we have here. To find the acceleration, we could use this equation just like we did before. The net force is going to be m times a. So the net force is 183.1. The mass of the box is 12 kilograms. And so the acceleration is 183.1 divided by 12. And so the acceleration in the x direction is 15.26 meters per second squared. So now we could focus on part C, now that we have the answer to part A. So what is the final speed of the box after it traveled a distance of 200 meters? So let's make a list of what we have. We have the acceleration. We're looking for the final speed. We're going to assume that the initial speed is zero and the displacement is 200 meters. So the equation that has these four variables is this one, v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2ad. So v initial is 0, the acceleration is 15.26, and d is 200. So 2 times 15.26 times 200, that's 6,104. So that's equal to the square of the final speed. So now we need to take the square root of both sides to get the final speed. So the square root of 6104 is 78.1 meters per second. So that's the final speed of the box after it traveled a distance of 200 meters. So this is going to be the last problem of this video. A 1,200 kilogram car speeds up from 25 meters per second to 60 meters per second in 5 seconds. What is the acceleration of the car? Well, let's make a list of what we have. We have the initial speed of 25. We have the final speed of 60 and a time value of 5. What is the acceleration? What equation has these four variables? Perhaps you've seen this one, v final is equal to v initial plus at. v final is 60, v initial is 25. We're looking for a, and t is 5. So first, we've got to subtract both sides by 25. 60 minus 25 is 35. So 35 is equal to 5a. So if we divide both sides by 5, 35 divided by 5 is 7. So the acceleration is 7 meters per second squared. So now that we have the acceleration, 
we can use that to calculate the net force. So part B, what is the net force acting on the car? The net force in a horizontal direction is the mass times the horizontal acceleration. And it makes sense that the car will be traveling in the horizontal direction. So F equals MA. It's just going to be 1,200 times an acceleration of 7. Now, 12 times 7 is 84. So this is going to be 8,400 newtons. So that's the net force in the x direction. So that's the answer to part B. Now, part C. I wrote part B twice, but this is supposed to be part C. If the car experiences a constant frictional force of 3,500 newtons, what is the average force exerted by the engines on the car? So let's draw a little picture. So here's the car. It has a mass M. And the engines is applying a force that's going to drive the car in the forward direction. And friction is going to oppose it. So just like before, the net force is going to be the difference between the applied force and the frictional force, which I like to use lowercase f to represent that. Our goal is to find the force exerted by the engines on the car. So that's f. So if we're trying to solve for f, we need to add friction to both sides of the equation. So the applied force, I'm going to put an a next to it, the force applied by the engines is going to be the net force plus the frictional force. The net force is 8400 and the frictional force is 3500 which adds up to 11,900 newtons. So let's make sense of this. So the box represents the car. The engines applies a force of 11,900 newtons to drive the car to the right. Friction slows it down by 3,500 newtons. So the net force in the x direction is the difference between these two, which is 8,400 newtons. So hopefully you see how these three numbers work out. But this is the answer to the question that we're looking for, which is the applied force, the force exerted by the engines on the car.